Hillary Clinton uh, is doing her own book junket. She will not leave. And this is the worst thing in the world for the Democrats because she was such a deeply unpopular candidate that she really lost the election more than Donald Trump won it. And I say that, you know, knowing that, that Trump may have been the only Republican candidate who could beat her. That's not a rip on Trump. This is just to point out how unpopular Hillary Clinton was. She won fewer votes, fewer votes in Michigan than Donald uh, Trump, sorry, Donald Trump won fewer votes in Michigan and won the state than George W. Bush won in 2004 in Michigan, and George W. Bush lost the state of Michigan. That doesn't demonstrate a vast Trump movement. It demonstrates everyone dislikes Hillary Clinton. Same thing in Wisconsin. Mitt Romney actually outperformed Donald Trump in Wisconsin in 2012. Mitt Romney lost the state. Trump won the state. Why? No one showed up to vote for this lady. No one showed up to vote for her. So she now comes along, and she is going to give her explanation for why she lost. And naturally, the explanation for why she lost is because Everyone is mean to her. It's just the end of the world. Everyone is cruel and mean and vicious. Her book came out yesterday, and apparently it is a heaping pile of garbage. There are amusing parts of it, I, I will admit. I've read some of the sections of it. I haven't had a chance to pick it up as of yet. It's been a bit of a busy week. And, uh, I mean, frankly, if I can somehow put it off to the point where it becomes irrelevant to the news, that'd be great, because I would not want to spend four hours reading her book. But uh, she is blaming everyone. I think my favorite part of this, of this book is there's a quote that came out from her book that is just astonishing, where she just completely misses how it is that the Orwell novel 1984, what it was about. So she actually writes this in her book. Attempting to define reality is a core feature of authoritarianism. This is what the Soviets did when they erased political dissidents from historical photos. This is what happens in George Orwell's classic novel 1984, when a torturer holds up four fingers and delivers electric shocks until his prisoner sees five fingers as ordered. The goal is to make you question logic and reason and to sow mistrust. For Trump, as, as with so much he does, it's about simple dominance. So she basically says the big problem with 1984 is that it, it's supposed to make you distrust, that the, the Trump's shtick is to make you distrust the press and the authorities, just like in 1984, which is not what 1984 is about. That's about why you should not trust the press and the authorities. The entire book is about not trusting the press and the authorities, but Hillary Clinton uh, is nearly as bad at literary analysis, apparently, as she is at things like running for office. Okay, so here is Hillary doing her shtick. She, she first of all rips the press. She starts off with, it's the press's fault. It's all the press's fault. They, they were just mean to me. If they hadn't been so cruel, then I would have won this election. Um, but I don't think the press did their job in this election, with very few exceptions. So the hard questions about what was real and what was realistic and what could happen with the right kind of election outcome we're never really joined. And so, you know, I found it frustrating, obviously, because I think I could have defended and lifted up a lot of what I believed we could do. But really, Ezra, when you get 32 minutes in a whole year to cover all policy, how does that work? Okay, so it's, it's all be, she wanted to talk policy, but the media were just too mean. Now, what's hysterical about this is that essentially what Hillary Clinton is doing is she's saying the entire 2016 election was, wait for it, fake news, right? She's suggesting that the media didn't do their jobs. The media were all part of this evil conspiracy to stop her. Now, I remember when there was a guy named Donald Trump, and he said this all the time and continues to say it all the time, and the media say, how dare Trump? How dare he insult us this way? But Hillary Clinton says the same thing, and they just sit there and take it. Well, she's probably right. You know, maybe we didn't do our jobs this time. Maybe we should have been more sycophantic. The big problem for Hillary Clinton and the Democrats is that the media were so sycophantic during the primaries, they refused to acknowledge what a bad candidate she was. So by the time she was exposed to the light of day, she just withered in the light of day. If the media had been honest about what a terrible candidate she was early on, the chances that she would have not won the nomination would have been exceedingly, exceedingly low. I mean, the media bias is always to the left. The best example of this today, there's an amazing tweet from a guy named Chris Chaliza over at CNN. Sometimes I think Chris Chaliza does some interesting stuff, but he tweeted something today that's just incredible. Here's what he tweeted, quote, The Today Show did Ted Cruz porn video and Seattle mayor resignation in its first 10 minutes. Banner day for politicians. And hey, why do I bring this up? Because when he says the Today Show did the Ted Cruz porn video and Seattle mayor resignation, you have to understand what those stories are to understand how biased the media is. Hillary says the media are biased against her and Democrats. Okay, that's insane. The Ted Cruz porn video? No, Ted Cruz was not in a porn video. No, Ted Cruz was not caught watching a porn video. One of his interns liked a porn video on his Twitter account that he doesn't even run. Okay, that's the Ted Cruz porn video story that was worthy of Chris Chaliza's tweet. And what is this Seattle mayor resignation story? 
That's Democrat Mayor Ed Murray of Seattle, who's a garbage mayor. He had to resign because there was a fifth allegation of child molestation against him. Child molestation, okay? Allegedly molested five kids. Okay, and, and here he is, Ed Murray, resigning. But how is that characterized by Chris Chaliza? As Seattle mayor resignation. Would you get from that that he was resigning because of alleged molestation? Is that what you would get from that? If you just read those two phrases, Ted Cruz porn video and Seattle mayor resignation, which one of those do you think would actually include a sex scandal? If you just read those two phrases. The Cruz one, right? But the Cruz thing's in nothing. The Seattle mayor just had to resign. He was, by the way, an up-and-comer in Democratic circles. There was talk about him running for governor of the state of Washington, Ed Murray. He's, I think, the first openly gay uh, mayor of, of Seattle. Uh, his $15 minimum wage guy in Seattle. Progressive hero. Molested, allegedly, five children. Five underage people. And Chris Chaliza characterizes that as Seattle mayor resignation. But no, we're supposed to believe that Hillary really, she was the one who was treated roughly by the media. Not Republicans, not Trump. It was really Hillary Clinton. Then Hillary said, you know who else is to blame? You know who else is to blame for all of this? I'll tell you. It was James Comey. James Comey was so mean. Here's Hillary Clinton explaining. I believe absent Comey, I might have picked up one or two points among white women. I'll give you the example I use in the book. So before the Comey letter on October 28th, I was 26 points ahead in the Philadelphia suburbs. That could have only happened if I had a big vote from women, Republican women, independent women. A week later, two, uh, 11 days later, I win the Philadelphia suburbs by 13 points. I needed to win by 18 points to be able to counterbalance the rest of the state. That wasn't just me. That's how Democrats win Pennsylvania in presidential campaigns. It stopped my momentum and it hurt me particularly among women. And I have so much anecdotal evidence for this. And now researchers are starting to pull some of this together. You know, all of a sudden the husband turns to the wife. I told you, she's going to be in jail. You don't want to waste your vote. You know, the boyfriend turns to the girlfriend and says, she's going to get locked up. Don't you hear? She's going to get locked up. I mean, all of a sudden it becomes a very fraught kind of conflictual experience. What I love here also so is the, the, saying, the, the statement from Hillary Clinton here that it's all the evil men who are telling their women, these stupid women, if only the stupid women wouldn't listen to their men, it's their men who are turning them and saying, she's going to be locked up. And the women are going, oh, darling, okay, I guess I won't vote for her anymore. Like, that's how Hillary Clinton actually pictures her own female voters. I can't imagine why this lady lost. I cannot imagine why this deeply unlikable human being lost. Then she says it wasn't just Comey, it was also Russian meddling. So first of all, just to point something out about the, the Comey thing, yes, James Comey botched this thing all the way through. But if you recall, the botchery started with him not indicting her in the first place, not recommending indictment in the first place, by actively changing the standard of law back in July, instead of just handing over his recommendation to Loretta Lynch, he did the bidding of Barack Obama. Right? He basically was writing her exoneration statement before he even interviewed her. You don't get to complain about James Comey when it's James Comey's fault that you were even running competitively up until the end of the election cycle. It wasn't just Comey, though, and it wasn't just the press. It was also the Russians, the Ruskies, the evil Ruskies. You notice there's one person who's missing in all of these calculations. Her name rhymes with Schmillery Blinton. Yeah, but Hillary, here's Hillary Clinton explaining that it was the Ruskies. That they, they, they won't After have to the take her out. Election was how effective the Russians through WikiLeaks were in weaponizing information against me and how they were getting really good political advice about placement, both geographic and platform from somebody. And mm -hmm. we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, but we didn't really see that. That was not clear to us at the time in the campaign. And in retrospect, you know, we saw how if you analyze Google searches, they were spiking in places that had been sort of swing, had ended up voting for President Obama, but were, you know, subject to being persuaded by the other side. WikiLeaks searches were off the charts. People were trying to understand and they were trying to make sense of some of the stuff they were hearing on their Facebook, you know, feeds or a friend yeah, telling them. I love the implication them, here, by the happened. way, that they were cleverly weaponizing WikiLeaks. Okay, I was there. What WikiLeaks did is they just released giant caches of documents. The idea that they were strategic, re strategically releasing portions of them in various outlets just is not true. That's not how WikiLeaks worked. They would dump a bunch of documents, and then people like me and my staff would crowdsource them. Okay, that was just stuff that happened during the election cycle. But it was also the Russians. And it wasn't the fault of the DNC for not actually protecting their servers. It was the Russians. It wasn't Hillary Clinton's fault in any way. It was that 
Hillary Clinton was victimized by the Russians. So now here are the people she's blamed, the press, James Comey, the Russians, and now we're about to find out that it was sexism and misogyny. That's really what happened here is people don't like women, right? It was people don't like women. It wasn't people don't like Hillary Clinton. It's that they don't, they don't like women in general. Like wh white women, who by the way, went for Donald Trump by a pretty wide margin. It's that white women hate women. That's really the problem here. I was really quite taken aback at the attitude and the behavior of my general election opponent yes. uh, because he made no bones about it, literally. He was so sexist and not just about me, but about you know his Republican woman opponent, his women and reporters on TV and elsewhere. So it was really a part of the atmosphere. And I want not just women, but men as well to know this is endemic. Sexism and misogyny are still endemic. We've made progress, but we can't allow ourselves to go backward. And as I point out in the book, it never was just about me. I happen to have the big bullseye on my head, yeah. but it was about women. And in the months since, we've seen reports out of Silicon Valley and other businesses, uh, as well as politics, where distinguished women like Elizabeth Warren or Kamala Harris or Kirsten Gillibrand um, or, uh, you know, others in the media are being treated to a level of overt sexism. Okay, this is absurd. This is absurd. People don't like Hillary Clinton. It's not they don't like women. That's ridiculous. Okay, Kamala Harris is only being talked about for the presidency because she's a woman. She's been in the Senate for five minutes and done nothing. Elizabeth Warren being talked about for president is an absurdity. I know Elizabeth Warren. She's a professor at Harvard Law School when I was there. Okay, the idea that Elizabeth Warren is being talked about as a presidential candidate is an absurdity. Christian Gillibrand, these are absurdities. But the idea that these are being treated, oh, it's, it's, it's that sexism was unlocked in the last election cycle. No, what happened is that people got tired of people like Hillary Clinton labeling them sexist, and they didn't care what Trump had to say anymore. That's what happened here. People had a choice, right? They could either take Trump with, yes,